back and welcome to another box makeover. Today we'll be turning this box of chocolates filled with random things now into Nicholas Mellow box. I want to organize my messy studio, so that's why I'm doing those box makeovers. But first, let's just empty things out of it. All empty light. Now to remove the reduced sticker from it. With this one, now this reduce sticker needs to go. Making sure it's a clean canvas to be painted white before work on it. The stickers are gone. Now the next step. I'm going to pierce holes for Nicholas Mello's legs and then I'll figure out a lid for that box but for now I'm just going to pierce holes in this for the wire so I could make him legs to pierce the areas for the legs I'm going to push the scissors as far as possible to get oh well that camera thing to get the holes into the box so there could be holes for the wire and that needs to be done so Nicholas Mello can have legs Wire applied. Now, I know it's not going to look normal yet, but it will. Because the next step is to add those beads so the legs aren't loose, like too loose on this one. It will still allow possibility, but without it being so loose, it could fall out any second type of feel without that. So that's why I'm adding this in. It will look normal in the end. For now it has to look like a skeleton leg situation. So I would know where to put the fabric for Nicholas Mello's legs. And this kind of feels like arts and crafts mixed in with a little bit of biology about the human body with non-human proportions. Now the next thing is to mark out the fabric for Nicholas Mello's skin for the legs. So kind of doing a trousers pattern but the legs is actually the guide and the trousers part where the feet are will be closed because 
that's not his trousers. That skin, which is a part of his body, just like those bones. Wow, I feel like I'm teaching you both biology and art. But anyways, time to cut out the pattern, stitch it, and put it on the body. Okay, so that's the fabric stitching done. Now I'm going to flip it over. Done. Now I put it on the skeleton legs. Legs stitched on. Time to give him arms by piercing the sides for the arms. I've pierced a big hole in here and a small one here, so... The press that on the wire, it will help me make heads for this Nicholas Mello. And there's still space in arms, like arm sockets, so I'm going to add in more wire to add the arms in bead and wire skeleton done time for the fabric stitching but this time for the arms fabric and now the Nicholas Mello box has arms but what about the head okay we're now on another stage making the head i've used the same fabric that i've used for his arms and legs to make the head however i want to try Possible facial features on Nicholas Mello. So, I've cut out a piece of plastic and I'm going to add in my features like teeth and the tongue because I want to try something realistic. And yet, still want to make it cute and not like creepy. Now, Nicholas Mello has a posable tongue and teeth. It kind of reminds me of putting dentures into somebody's mouth except I've never done actual dentures but this looks like it oh we're getting dental here let's put this toothpaste also known as the white acrylic paint and glue for permanence to fix the transparent tooth problem he has I don't know what caused it but it's a dental problem I'm dealing with teeth painted white gums and everything red time to let it dry I'm giving him posable lips with wire. Good thing I'm trying it on a one third scale because one twelve scale is too small for that amount of features. But one third scale is okay for experimenting with 
being a doll dentist or anything like it. So I'm going to show you I ever I've stitched it into the stuffing while the mic thing is still drying the teeth and the tongue. My done, nose done, neck done. Now it's time to add him eyes. The white buttons are stitched on. Now to add irises and peoples to them. Pink irises and the peoples will be black later. They've been glued on and they need to dry. And while the pupils were drying, I decided to give him eyelashes. Like, he would look better with eyelids and eyelashes. So that's why I was productive while it dried. I worked on Nicholas Mello's face and then here I have added a press stud for his wig. Right now it is drying but I'm giving him a pink wig because that's his hair color. However, the white bits have to dry before I can make them pink. And I think he looks way better with the wig on. However, sometimes he will have different colored wigs. In this video, I'll only show the pink one. I just glued and stitched some fabrics. Then the satin ribbons were glued onto the fabric to make the wig. Just in case you're curious on how to make it. And maybe you secretly want to replicate the Nicholas Mello box. Even if you never tell me. And after Nicholas Mello's wig has dried, we're going to use the rest of these watercolor paints to color the white spots pink. So, it's kind of doing the hair dye, but with paintbrush and watercolor paints for a box so I may want to rotate this for a better and more convenient working angle going to make the roots darker and work the way up into the lighter pink just so it looks more realistic like a realistic looking pink hair Even though some strands are already pink, I'm still painting over with those paints to achieve the look I want. This 
is the amount of the darker pink I used for the roots. Look at it, it's empty. However, the lighter pink still got the traces and I'm going to use them. So, I'm just casually moving the hair just so I could add the pink colors into it. And I just apply the paint over the white ones. Just trying to finish off that pink. I do have a new palette of pink watercolor paints, but that amount was all I need for that wig. Anyway, so. That's why. I have to make sure it's all over his hair. I will just keep on going until all the strands are pink. Now I did have to remove the wig so I could color everything pink that is here on this wig. And wow, what a beautiful wig. But anyways, let's put it back on Nicholas Mello. Wow, look how much the pink hair suits Nicholas Mello. However, the wig thing... I would find it more convenient and more practice on wigs if I chose to do the wig for him anyways. Like an option to change hair colors without ruining this beautiful pink wig. So that's why it's more convenient for color, change for his hair and doesn't ruin it and it's permanent on the wig. So that's why I chose to give him wigs. But anyways, let's do his clothing. Time for the clothing. I had to make the shorts with stretchy fabric to make sure it fits right. However, I'm giving Nicholas Mello the classic Nicholas Mello gray shorts and White shirt with a red bow tie outfit. Anyways, even with the stretchy fabric, because of this body have such a cylinder shape, I need to stitch on press studs to make it hold its shape on him the way I want it. Two. Besides the press stud, he also needs buttons at the side 
to make his shorts and trousers hold shape. Whenever that cylinder box is wearing them. However, when I make him the shirt, it will not be visible. However, I'm doing this for the sake of the short staying in their shape the way I want them to. So, I'm also going to have to make holes in the shorts. Especially for those button closures that I've made on the underlayer t-shirt. I've made those underlayer clothing for modesty. So that's why. So even when he doesn't have his clothes on, it's not like you know. He still has something on. Okay, now I'm going to repeat this procedure with this side. The shirt, because of its cylinder shape, I have stitched on the sleeves that's along. piece here like a long chest and back piece and the sleeves there the reason why the sewing patterns I've cut out are like this because of his cylinder shape now I have to stitch those sleeves and hope that when I finish the basics, he would be able to wear it. It fit on Nicholas Mello. Well, as long as I have cut up the front of it. However, for it to hold its shape, it needs a press that here, then buttons, and of course a way to make his bow tie stay on the way I want it to. Press that stitched on. So, and they're holding it their shape on. That's good, that means I can now remove the pin and now I work on the buttons. Buttons done. But what about here? I think I need more fabric and everything so beige, brown and grey to the point that this pink wig is the biggest pop of color here but I will balance things out later and my colorful display will balance out the beige, the brown, and the grays there. The last part, making his shoes. So I'm using a stretchy fabric for them. I'm going to stitch here. Stitched, now I'm going to try it on. Nicholas Mello and I'm going to now add white fabric for the foot part of his shoes stitched on the white thing and I'm adding pink shoelaces to the red shoes 
and for that I made holes in them. I can't really tie shoelaces, so I'm just going to stitch them together. They're already big enough to be removed without doing and undoing them. Okay, I've actually managed to do the shoelace somehow. I'm afraid of doing shoelaces because of this. I have autism and it can get me really paranoid about doing things wrong. So... That's why I think I can't do them, but I try sometimes. Just the paranoia makes me put off shoelaces about doing it wrong. And I don't really like to listen to instructions. However, I tend to come up with a lot of unusual doll house life hacks that nobody else would do but me so that's why I'm going to repeat everything for his other shoe that last shoelace is finally tied and that's the finished Nicholas Mello box with doll parts inside it. What do you think of him? Please tell me in the comments. And bye Chef Tech. See you in another video. Bye.